In this video, we're going to look at an example of normalizing a wave function. So in the previous video, we learned the nuts and bolts of how to normalize a wave function. And now we want to put that to the test. So the problem says normalize the wave function for the hydrogen atom that is proportional to e to the negative r over a naught. Right. So we have this, this uh, wave function. This is a valid solution to Schrodinger's equation for the hydrogen atom. And it's unnormalized. Right. So it's a, it's a valid solution. But at this point, it's unnormalized. So the normalized wave function psi would be equal to some normalization factor times e to the negative r over a naught. OK, our goal here is to figure out this normalization factor. So we already know that this e to the negative r over a naught gives us a valid solution to the Schrodinger's equation, but we need to figure out what is this normalization factor that's going to allow us to have a normalized probability distribution so that we can view this wave function within the Born interpretation, right? So what are we gonna have to do? So recall from the last video that to solve for n, this normalization factor, right? n is going to be equal to one over, right? The square root of the integral of this probability distribution over all space, right? So now, since we're dealing with R here, right? This is in spherical polar coordinates. So all space available to this wave function is gonna be over spherical polar coordinates, R, theta, and phi. So we're gonna to have to do a triple integral, right? So we're gonna to have to integrate from uh, phi from zero to two pi, theta from zero to pi, r from zero to infinity, right, uh, of this wave function. That's a function of r, theta, and phi squared. And our volume element, again, reviewing from the last video, is r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi right okay so n is going to be equal to this so what does this mean this means that the integral in the denominator we need to solve right um and it may look daunting at first but it gets simpler right so let's let's go ahead and set up that integral so that we can solve so we want to solve the integral in the denominator Right, so we have this triple integral, zero to two pi, zero to pi, zero to infinity, right? If we square this uh, wave function, right, we square e to the negative r over a naught, then we get e to the negative two r over a naught, right? So that becomes our square, our probability distribution. And then everything else just comes along for the ride, right? So r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. Okay, so now if you're a master at multidimensional calculus, then you already know what exactly what we need to do. If not, then follow me here, right? So what we wanna do when you see a triple integral like this, you wanna break it up into its different components, solve those one dimensional integrals, and then just multiply everything back together, right? So we wanna first take the pieces that depend on R, right, the distance. So first we'll have an integral with respect to R from zero to infinity, right? So every, you wanna pick out everything here that depends on R. So obviously our function, our exponential function depends on R since that's in the exponent. This R squared from the differential volume element also depends on R. And then our differential uh, volume element dr here also depends on R. So we wanna throw all of that in the same integral. So we'll have R squared e to the negative two R over a naught dr, right? That's our first integral. Now we wanna look at everything that depends on theta and integrate that stuff, right? So have that as its own separate integral. So we're integrating with respect to theta from zero to pi, right? And everything that depends on theta is just the sine theta d theta here, right? So we got sine theta d theta, cool. 
And the last integral is the azimuthal angle, right? Phi. So that's going to be integrated from zero to two pi. And the only thing that depends on phi is d phi, which is lucky for us because those integrals are really simple to solve. Okay, so this is what you want to do anytime you encounter an, a multidimensional integral in any class, regardless of whether it's here in physical chemistry or anywhere else. Uh, you want to split that integral up into its one dimensional components, multiple, solve those integrals separately, and then uh, put everything, piece everything back together. Okay. So before we move forward with solving these integrals, most of these you can probably already solve. Like this one on the end with respect to phi, really simple to solve, right? Um, this one with respect to theta, it's just the integral of sine theta. This one is, is a special case, right? Um, maybe you've already seen the solution to this integral before, but um, I wanna make sure that it's explicit uh, the solution for this integral. You'll see it a lot. And the general solution for this integral is definitely going to be in the back of any physical chemistry textbook that's worth its salt, right? Um, so this is going to be a general integral that you can use to solve this guy. So we'll use the following general integral. Right, so the general integral that we'll make use of is if you see an integral of the, of the following form, zero to infinity of x to the n e to the negative ax, the solution to that is going to be n factorial over a to the n plus one. Right, so this is a general integral. Like I said, it's in the back of basically every physical chemistry textbook is going to be used heavily throughout this class. You'll memorize this solution regardless of whether you want to or not. Um, and it it's, it's very useful in this situation because this integral fits that form, right? In this case, the X here is R and we just have to figure out the other components in order to solve the integral. So uh, moving back to solving each of these integrals. So solving the integral. Right, so that first integral, the solution to that integral is gonna come from this general solution, right? Um, looking at this, oh, I should put dx in this integral as well. Make sure I don't forget that. Boom, that's our integrating variable. Okay, so getting the solution here, right? Um, our integrating variable is r in this case, right? So that's the x, you know, corresponding it to the general integral. Now the value of n in this case is gonna be two. So the solution here is going to be, at least the numerator we already know, it's going to be two factorial. And I'll go ahead and simplify it. So two factorial is two, so I'm just gonna put two in the numerator here. So two is the numerator. Now we just have to figure out what is a, right? So a, in this case, is going to be two over a naught, right? Because our integrating variable is r in this case. Right, so R is there. So everything that's in front of your integrating variable in that exponent is gonna be the constant A out front. So in the denominator, we're going to put two over A naught. And that is our solution. Well, not just yet, right? So N plus one is in the, the uh, exponent there. So N plus one in this case will be two plus one, which will be three. Now that's our solution to that first integral, right? So using these general integral solutions will be useful um, all throughout this class, but uh, that one is definitely going to be very useful uh, for the case of any of these integrals in spherical polar coordinates. This integral is gonna pop up a lot. Okay, so the second integral, integrating from, uh, integrating sine theta. So that's a general integral. The integral of sine theta is gonna be negative cosine theta. Right, we're gonna to wanna to evaluate that guy from zero to pi. And the integral here is just gonna be two pi uh, minus zero, right? So that's just gonna be two pi. Right, so the only thing we have now to evaluate here is, um, cos is the negative cosine, right? So we have everything else. So let's go ahead and, um, and just solve that integral so everything else comes down a naught to the third 
right? So solving this integral, if you plug in pi here, then you'll get one, right? Because cosine pi is going to be negative one. Negative times negative one is positive one, right? So, and then same deal here. You plug in cosine uh, theta, you're going to get uh, one, my bad. So one there, and then two pi. Right, so we have all of our solutions here, right? So let's go ahead and uh, simplify this a little bit more, right? So since this is a fraction, right, the what's on the denominator in this fraction can go in the numerator here. So we'll have two a naught to the third over uh, two to the third. Obviously this would be two and this would be two pi. Right. So uh, when you simplify all of this, right, so um, so two to the third, right, um, this basically is two times two times two. Right. We have a bunch of we have three twos in the numerator as well. So these guys actually cancel out. So you get two to the third canceling with the three twos that we have here. Right. Or you can think of it as, you know, two to the third is going to be eight. When you multiply all of that across, that's going to be eight as well. So that stuff cancels out. So that stuff's gone. Uh, so basically we end up with pi a naught to the third. Okay, cool. So um, we're not exactly done yet, right? This is just the evaluation of the integral. We're almost done. This is just the evaluation of the integral. The normalization constant, remember, is going to be equal to this guy, right? We got to take that solution of the integral, put it under one. We'll take the square root of it, put it under one. And that is our normalization constant. So in this case, our normalization constant is going to be equal to the square root of one over pi a naught to the third. Right. That's it. So basically putting it over one, taking the square root, that's going to be our normalization factor. Right. Um, so if we were to write out the normalized wave function, right, that means that our normalized wave function would be equal to, and you can rewrite that normalization factor as just one over the square root of pi a naught to the third, right? Since the square root of one is one, right? So you have that e to the negative r a naught. Right. That is going to be our normalized wave function. Right. Just putting our normalization constant out front of our uh, valid solution to Schrodinger's equation. OK, so this is an example of how to normalize a wave function. Um, this was a good example, just trying to get some experience with uh, multidimensional integrals, getting some experience with spher spherical polar coordinates, kind of getting comfortable with using those things in this context. So um, so that's an example of how you normalize a wave function.